I had a video planned for today, but then the lights went out. But then they came back on. Then they went out again. Then they came back on. That is ghost switching. If you're using a Sonoff as a light switch, that has probably happened to you. Good news is there's a pretty easy solution. Let me show you. Don't be fooled by the name. Ghost switching is not actually caused by a ghost. And the solution has nothing to do with Bill Murray. Although when it happens at my house, I do like to tell my kids that it's the ghost of Thomas Edison. They don't get it. Ghost switching happens because of interference from nearby electrical systems getting picked up by the wires that are going between your GPIO pins and your button or your light switch. The solution is simple. You put a resistor between the GPIO pin that you're using and the 3.3 volt pin. And you put a capacitor between the GPIO pin and ground. In the mystical world of electronics, that creates what's known as a low pass filter. But for us, we're gonna call it the Neutrona wand. The fun part here is gonna be explaining how it works. The Neutrona wand, or if you prefer, the low pass filter, it works because the capacitor allows high frequency signals to pass easily from the GPIO pin to ground, essentially eliminating them from the load side of the circuit, which in this case is the button, but puts up a lot of resistance for low frequency signals. Fortunately for us, the signal that we actually want to pass through is DC, which is as low a frequency as you can get. Really, it's zero. It doesn't go up or down much, or it shouldn't. It's not perfect, so it might a little, but theoretically, it should be zero or darn near zero. It works because the capacitor has low resistance for high frequency signals, but high resistance for low frequency signals. The noise we're trying to get rid of is high frequency. We don't know exactly what frequency, but we know it's higher than DC, which is zero. So the DC current can't go through the capacitor, but all the AC noise can. Now the resistor that's there is there to direct the current to flow through the capacitor. Otherwise, the path of least resistance would be to bypass the capacitor completely. Without the resistor, the neutrona wand doesn't work. The size of the resistor and the capacitor isn't terribly critical. I first learned about this solution thanks to a guy named Alex Gorgio. Hope I said that right, Alex. He recommended using a 4.7K resistor and a 33 nanofarad capacitor. But those numbers are not set in stone. This is the equation to calculate the frequency cap. With a 4.7K resistor and a 33 nanofarad capacitor gives us a frequency cap of 1000 Hertz. Most of the stuff that we're gonna to wanna to filter is gonna be quite a bit higher than that. I found this really useful calculator. If you know the frequency cap you want and what resistor or what capacitor, it'll give you the size for the other. If you have a resistor and a capacitor, it'll tell you what the frequency cap's gonna be. Very useful. Again, since the signal that we want to get through is DC, which should have a frequency of darn near zero, we can make our frequency cap super low and not worry about filtering out some part of a signal that we want to get through. And just to make sure that you don't miss any of the interference, it's probably a good idea to make your frequency cap as low as possible, like the frequency cap limbo. I've got some resistors and some capacitors, and you know I've got Sonoffs. So let's go through some of the more common boards, and we'll look at how we can arrange the resistor and the capacitor to try and not interfere with all the other stuff on the board. And I'll even show you a non-soldering solution but you should really learn to solder. This is the Sonoff Basic. It's of course the most common model and the one that most of us are using. So let's focus on this first. You see, I've already soldered a header here. I've already flashed this with Tasmoda. There's a capacitor, there's a resistor. I want the capacitor to go from the GPIO pin to ground. Okay, now we can take the resistor, put it in the three volt slot. We don't want it to touch the grounded leg of the capacitor. Now we can take our jumpers and we can go from ground with this one. Having that capacitor lead in there makes it pretty tight, but it'll fit. And then here's our GPIO pin. Let's jam that sucker in there. It gets pretty tight with two of them in there, but that's one method. OK, 
Okay, this is a Sonoff Basic, raw, right out of the box. I think it's gonna be best to put these on the bottom. The square contact point here, that's three volts. This is GPIO 14, and this is ground. So our resistor goes between three volts and GPIO 14, okay? Now our capacitor goes between GPIO 14 and ground. That looks pretty good, I don't see it coming in contact with anything I don't want it to contact. So now to get the wire on there. Okay, now we gotta do the ground. All right, I'm putting a wire on the 3.3 volt pin as well, just because I've got a switch with an LED on it. I wanna try, oh boy, I should have done this one first. This is the dual. This is an R2, you can see the R2. Okay, so to get this one into programming mode, you can just take a button zero and ground and put a jumper, and that does it. I've already flashed this one. I'm gonna use this three volt contact right here to connect a resistor between, so from three volts to button zero and from three volts to button one. And then I'll put my capacitors between ground and button zero and ground and button one. The three volt contact is square. Okay, I've got some really thin heat shrink tubing. And I think I'll just put some of that over the resistor to just keep it from contacting anything else accidentally or inadvertently. Now I'll solder that right there. Okay, turned out pretty good. Now somebody out there might know better than me if I even need this second resistor. Maybe you don't even need it, but maybe you could just use one for both. But I've got extra resistors, so I'm going to do it this way. Okay, that looks well clear of everything else. Oh, I just solder this end. We're gonna take our shortened capacitor. And we're gonna put one leg up there, one leg up there, put those together, bend that over, and then stick it on our board like this. Okay, that's what I'm shooting for. Same thing over here. got capacitors. It's got two resistors. Everything's soldered in good. So that's the dual. Okay, now we've got the SV. The SV has the signal, which is the GPIO pins. They're labeled down here. Five is the top, four is the middle, and 14 is the bottom. The middle row is three volts, and then ground is on the last row. We're going to use one of these, which is a header. I've already trimmed the resistor and the capacitor. So we want the capacitor to go between the GPIO pin and ground. So those will be the outer two holes. And then we want the resistor to go between GPIO and the three volt. Make sure that that other side of that resistor is not touching the other part of that capacitor. So now I just ram that on there and there she goes and then I can do this if I want and then I can hook jumpers up here and I can if I don't use this three volt in the middle I can just trim it off so of the three this one is definitely the easiest well that's it hopefully that'll be the end of any ghost switching problems now if you don't want to mess with the resistors and the capacitors you could also try using twisted pair wires to go from the board to your switch or you could also try shielded wire but learning how to use resistors and capacitors is pretty cool. And the more we get into hacking electronics and doing things around our house like this, the better off we'll be if we know how to use some of these components. Hope that was helpful to you. 
roll the disclaimer, and little D, take us home. Thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.